Hi, this is Jeff with FrostyGarden.com, and today we're going to talk about how we heat our greenhouse. It's been cold here still. We're still getting snow and single-digit temperatures, but it looks like next week things are going to change. We're going to be able to start hardening off our plants and also get them transitioned to our greenhouse. That's a great sign for us, and we're really happy about it. To be honest, building our greenhouse is probably one of the best things that we've ever done for our cold climate gardening efforts. It's been a huge benefit to us, especially when we want to grow warm climate crops like tomatoes and peppers. We also wanted to be able to use our greenhouse for early season seedlings. We wanted to get them outside as soon as possible so that they can start growing under the sun. The sun is a much better light than our indoor grow lights, so it's beneficial to get our plants outside. But here in the subarctic, we're still dealing with cold temperatures and our frosts will go up to June 1st. So we needed a way to heat our greenhouse in order to prevent frost from developing inside of our greenhouse. Just to be super clear here, our general goal is not to grow all year long. It's really not feasible for us to heat against temperatures like negative 40 and negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we do instead is we try to get about a month of season extension on either side of the growing season. That takes our very short growing season of three months here in Alaska and turns it into a five month growing season. That's a game changer for us. When we built our greenhouse, we used very common corrugated plastic in order to sheathe the exterior of the greenhouse. This is a great material for us because it holds up to heavy snow loads and has generally handled our subarctic winters very, very well. That said, it does have a lot of opportunities for air exchange. Heating, no matter how you get there, through electricity, oil, propane, natural gas, any of those materials, is very, very expensive. We needed to solve the problem where we had a lot of air exchange. We're not interested in heating the great outdoors. So to solve the problems with air exchange, what we did is we did an upgrade to our greenhouse. We installed this plastic layer, this is UV rated plastic, and basically what we did is we sealed the interior of our greenhouse. We used this woven nylon cord in order to attach the plastic to the greenhouse wood. And then there's stainless steel staples here that basically secure the plastic to the greenhouse. To be honest, this upgrade was probably one of the best things that we ever did to our greenhouse. Not only did it make it feasible for us to use our greenhouse in the shoulder season for our seedlings and things like that, it also improved our summer performance incredibly. Having two layers gets you almost an additional month on both ends of the season in your greenhouse. And for us here in the subarctic with three month summers, that's a huge benefit. So when we did this upgrade, we honestly weren't sure if it was going to be enough to be able to use our greenhouse in the shoulder season. We had done some calculations using a BTU calculator to see how much power it was going to take in order to heat our 10 by 12 greenhouse. This still didn't give me any degree of certainty, so I needed to do some testing. The following fall, we did some testing with an electrical space heater and determined that absolutely we were able to heat our greenhouse to comfortable temperatures that would protect our plants from frost. In general, we keep our greenhouse at about 45 degrees. This can be done even when the external temperatures are into the teens. And it's also very inexpensive for us to do that. We don't have permanent power installed to our greenhouse. We use a 12 gauge electrical extension cord in order to bring power to our greenhouse. This works great for us since we're only using our greenhouse for four or five months a year. It's really not worth the added expense for us to bury electrical lines out to our greenhouse. Okay, now that we've got everything plugged in, we can talk about our actual heating systems. So when we were thinking about fuels and energy sources that we wanted to use to heat our greenhouse, we settled on electricity. Things like propane and other gases and oil are very difficult to temperature control. They're super complicated and they require constant delivery of fuels. Electricity, however, is practically unlimited at our homestead. Just for a quick safety break, we wanted to remind you that we're using a 12 gauge extension cable in order to bring power to our greenhouse. This is really important for electrical safety reasons because we're gonna be drawing almost 1500 watts out of our greenhouse when both of these heaters are running. So this is our general temperature control system. I built this little panel here and it's basically some very inexpensive Inkbird temperature controllers that we use to set the heaters or the fans on depending on what the temperature is. We have three of them for a very important reason. We have two that are dedicated to heat here and the reason that we had to do that is that these are limited to 10 amps per unit. These space heaters when running on 750 watts will use a little bit under 10 amps. If we set these to run 1500 watts, they would actually exceed the capacity of our temperature controller. So in order to, again, meet electrical safety, we had to have one unit per space heater in order to make sure that we did not exceed the 10 amp limit. 
Having two space heaters also provides us some additional benefits. One, it provides redundancy. If we have a failure of a temperature controller or a, a heater itself, we have another heater that can back it up. This is really important because if we had an event where one of these failed, we could end up losing our plants. So it's very, very important for us to think about redundancy when it comes to protecting our plants. We have plant killing temperatures outside. It's not safe for plants to be outside at this time. That's why we're going to all these troubles. So one of the things that we decided to do here was stagger the heating temperatures that these two temperature controllers would trigger at. Heating one here will actually turn on at 40 degrees and try to heat the greenhouse to 45 degrees. Heating two here will, try, will trigger at 35 degrees and also try to heat the greenhouse up to 45 degrees. What that allows us to do is usually run only one heater because most of the time that we're trying to heat our greenhouse, the 750 watt heater is plenty enough. But if outdoor conditions warrant, the second heater can kick on and basically help protect our plants and prevent that one heater from being overwhelmed. That's also another reason we run two space heaters. You might also notice that we have a third temperature controller for cooling. This allows us to keep our cooling entirely separate from our heating systems. There is a little bit of a technical limitation where you can only have so much temperature differential on these temperature controllers. So for us, having our cooling on a separate unit was the right technical decision for us in our greenhouse. This system has been quite impressive for heating our 10 by 12 greenhouse. It's been fully capable of heating our greenhouse to 45 degrees down to temperatures of about mid teens. That's really good for us. We also think it could go even lower, but we're also concerned about the costs of running our greenhouse. So that's the next thing we're gonna talk about is how much does this system cost? We really needed to answer the question of how much was this going to cost as far as electricity goes. We knew that heating was going to be expensive, but we had no idea what to expect. So we hooked our greenhouse up to our smart home system. This allowed us to measure the amount of electricity and see it over time. We could see our usage per day, per week, per month. That was really awesome, and what we found really surprised us. We were legitimately concerned about how much it was going to cost to heat our greenhouse. We honestly weren't sure what to expect, and what we found was incredibly surprising. We found that in average temperatures of in the 20s and in the 30s, we can heat our greenhouse to about 45 degrees for pennies a day. In the coldest temperatures, down to the teens and maybe about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, it only costs us about 50 cents a day. That's incredible. Honestly, we can't even run grow lights for that cost. So it's much more cost effective for us to use the heating in the greenhouse and we have 10 foot by 12 foot of space to put our garden seedlings in. Honestly, this project of sealing our greenhouse has made being able to heat our greenhouse an absolute reality. We don't think we could have done it otherwise. If you're thinking about doing a project like this on your greenhouse, it's absolutely worth it. We can't recommend it enough. It has improved our summer performance and also made heating our greenhouse a practical reality. Once again, I'm Jeff with FrostyGarden.com. I want to thank you for watching. If you would, please do give us a like and subscribe. We're a small YouTube channel and we're really trying to make a name for ourselves. And of course, if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments below. We actively monitor and respond to all comments. Thank you for watching.